Hello, everybody. It is Gabby Jones, and I work for Encryption Consulting. And today we're going to be talking about different types of PKI, their key features and functions. First, we're going to define all the main types of PKI. Then we will dive into the details of each distinctive type and take an overview of the differences among them. So let's begin with understanding PKI. Uh, the abbreviation stands for Public Key Infrastructure. It is a set of roles, procedures, and policies needed to create, distribute, manage, use, and revoke digital certificates and manage public key encryption. PKI is used to confirm the identity of a user by providing ownership of a private key. It is a trusted service to verify that a sender or receiver of data is exactly who they claim to be. There are four main types of PKI, which we will cover in this video. Um, they are public, private, government, and consortium. While all PKIs essentially provide the same function, each one is a distinctive type it, and it has its own way of completing the function. And they are also governed by their own individual types of rules. Um, some of them may be similar, but they're each different in their own way. Now, um, let's go over those four different types just to understand the definitions of those types of PKI. So the first one we're gonna talk about is public. The certificates issued from root and intermediate CAs that are embedded in the browsers and operating systems and therefore publicly trusted by the browser and OS trust stores. They are regulated by one or more bodies, including the CA or browser forum, Adobe, and others. And then private, these PKIs can be run wholly internally and the roots are not trusted in browser trust stores. Essentially, they're run with a self-contained ecosystem. The third we're gonna talk about is government. This type of PKI is managed and regulated by federal government requirements and codified laws. Governments and government bodies can be both the authority and the customers of this PKI. These are heavily regulated and checked due to the sensitivity of the information it encrypts and protects. And then for the fourth one is consortium. A consortium is a group made up of two or more individuals, companies, or governments that work together to achieve a common objective. Entities that participate in a consortium pool resources, but are otherwise only responsible for the obligations that are set out in the consortium's agreements. So now we're gonna go over each of these types of PKI in detail. So on this slide, it shows public and private and their information. Uh, first, we're gonna go over public PKI. The first bullet, it is heavily regulated, but civilian and industry participation is brought. In this, public CAs require use of specific key pools. Public CA requests must follow a strict internal approval process along with root store inclusion approval. Public CAs are subject to annual audits and here limited flexibility for customization and certificate configuration or settings is provided. So it ends up being limited. For private PKI, this type of PKI can be heavily regulated, but only regulated by the owner or the users of the root chain. It does not chain up to a publicly trusted root CA. It is trusted only by limited user group, which is why root needs to be imported into browser as a trust anchor for each user. Here, there's much more flexibility um, for customizing certificate profiles compared to the public certificates and it is dependent upon contracts and relationships. So now let's go ahead and move on to the government and consortium PKI. For government, the bullets are listed and I'll start there. It is heavily regulated by governments and law. In this, Root CA is usually owned and operated by a government entity. It is not as open to public participation or changes without agreement internally. It will usually have its own audit or CP or CPS and specific rules as to who can work on the system. 
it should follow the respective government entities process for approval, documentation, and execution. In the United States, this PKI requires an authority to operate, which is granted by the government. This is a formal application process where the CA must demonstrate compliance with all government PKI requirements, and it needs to be renewed periodically. For consortium PKI, it is regulated and some require a request for proposal or RFP to engage and participate. Consortia usually have created their own set of rules, usually with specific rules around issuing profiles or validation. Most consortia will have their own CP or CPS that they are issuing by. Uh, it often involves different technologies. Um, so it, you'll, you'll see different technologies um, other than TLS and code sign. The participation of the regulatory bodies tends to be volunteer-based. And here in Consortium PKI, key ceremony requests from member organizations may need to be approved by the consortium's leadership. All right, I think that's gonna be all from my side. Thank you so much for watching this video to learn more about encryption and data protection. If you would like to learn more about the data protection related terms and terminologies and definitions, please go to our website, which is listed under the contact information. Uh, it is www.encryptionconsulting.com. Please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, it was really nice to be able to share this information on PKI with you. Hope to see you soon.